En el nombre de Allah, el benéfico, el misericordioso. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I want to greet our brothers and our sisters here in Chicago, or wherever you may be watching us across the planet this morning in the greeting words of peace, which we say in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. I wanted to just give you a few words this morning as we're leading to that monumental event that resonates with the people of the planet Earth, regardless of our hue, regardless of our so-called ethnicity and background, the call coming from the lips of God's servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, of justice or else, is being met by the youth in particular and I'm including myself in that youth, because 40 is not old, 50 is not old. Minister Farrakhan is proving 82 is not old, 83 is not old. It's how we think that makes us young or old. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on his Justice or Else tour, everywhere he has gone has reminded us that this call for justice is not just for black people in America, although you are at the center of this call. Because it is 20 years ago that a call was made and we're commemorating it this year at the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March, which was called for black men. But today the call is not for black men alone, all those who have been deprived of justice. And he's reminded us that the native and so-called Latino people are in need of justice too. I come from those people, all praises due to Allah. I come from those people that are today referred to as Mexican people. And I say today referred to as that because 300 years ago there was no Mexico. Five centuries ago when Columbus came and found these shores, I didn't say discovered, I said he found these shores. There were already people here. So we didn't need his discovery to know that we were here. And when he came, if you read some of the first accounts, the writers from Spain and Portugal said that they found people here that they described as negros. Well, that means black in Spanish. What did he see? They had seen people from India before. They'd seen people from China before. Why did they describe the people that they found in this hemisphere as negros, some of them? Because we'd already discovered one another a long, long time ago. Our unity and the basis of what we're coming together for is not some new political pact. It's not some economic scheme. We have to come together today for justice. The Mexican people have been attacked for five centuries now. Those of us who are the descendants of the indigenous or what you call native people, the Indian people, these are our lands by birthright. All of it. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, all of it. Not just some of it, not just the part that's in the treaties, not just the part that is in the treaties of Guadalupe Hidalgo, not just in the over 700 treaties written with the different tribes and nations of the Western Hemisphere, that they've broken all of them. Why would we keep going back to these people who are proven liars of five centuries and over 700 treaties broken? Why would we keep going back to them thinking we will get better? Donald Trump and what he espoused from his mouth and his wicked demonic heart is just the voice of a mind and a people who see as us as inferior to them. He says that all of the Mexicans coming are being sent by the Mexican government. That they're trying to empty their prisons of the rapists and the criminals. Well, wait a second, who came with Columbus and the pilgrims? If it's true, there's a history of this. And the Mexican people did not invent this. They're copying, copying your wickedness to infest the natural people and their native ways. We didn't have rapists amongst the Indian people here. 
We didn't have liars and thieves. We didn't have to have law like that because we didn't have a Quran telling us about the spider and the bee, but we had the book of God telling us about the spider and the bee and the cow and the horse, and we read God's creation. We're here today because we're here not just to defy Donald Trump. He's nothing. White supremacy in its mentality is nothing. They're not the givers or authors of justice, but we as the Mexican and Native people are in need of justice today. Because we're here in the United States living in a subhuman type of life where we have to live in the shadows and hide from the police and hide from our employers and take the inhumane treatment that's piled upon us because we're afraid of our immigration status because we're afraid somebody will call ICE or immigration on us to take away our children and our families when we're the original people of this hemisphere. We're the builders of civilization. And that's why we have to stand today as Mexicans, as Puerto Ricans, as all of the people descended from the native people, mixed with the black people brought from Africa. All of us have that in our blood today. That's why we feel salsa music. That's why we feel cumbia music. That's why we feel La Bamba. You don't get more Mexican than La Bamba, but La Bamba was the slave spiritual songs of the slaves brought from Angola into Mexico. How come Mexicans don't know we're talking about the motherland of Africa when we sing about La Bamba? Because we've been deprived of the knowledge of who we are. We don't even know we're really Indians. We think we started with slavery and conquest and colonialism. No, we are here and have been here as long as the Creator has been here. We're one people, the black, the red, the brown. We're not really brown, we're not really red. We're members of the black nation. And that's why I'm so happy to be a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Because in their teaching, I could be proud of who I am as a Mexican. I could not salute that red, white, and green imitation of the Italian flag. I want to represent and salute the ancestors that died so that we could have sovereignty and try to keep a land of our own. And that land has been taken from us. Texas, California, New Mexico. It was a scheme and plot because they wanted it to be slave territory. So again, at the center of the taking of our land is the black man and woman. And look at the wickedness they did. The Apache people who used to be on that land, they would separate some of the Apaches to the north and they became Americans. Some of the Apache to the south and they became Mexicans. And then they fought one another. And then they sent, not because they're such cowards, they didn't send white soldiers in, they sent the buffalo soldiers in on the northern side. We didn't have any beef with one another. They told you that these Mexicans are taking your land, which they falsely promised to you. And they sent Buffalo soldiers in on the north to make war with the Apache and Native and Mexican people there. So we have wounded one another at the call of a wicked orchestrator who's pit pitting us once against the other for their benefit. Then on the south, the Apache that were divided to the south, they deported the Apaches from Mexico into Cuba in exchange for black slaves from Cuba now to be in Mexico. Think about the wickedness of what they've done. And now today it's a disgrace that we see each other as really enemies of one another when we're co-victims of the same wicked enemy and we have never been taught to look at him. That's why I'm excited, I don't want to be long, but you don't understand the pain that we've suffered as Mexican people confused in our, in our identity, speaking Spanish that is not our language, feeling excommunicated from our people here in the North when we don't speak Spanish because they say, oh, you don't speak the language of your mother, where the language of our forefathers was never Spanish. But we want to speak it today because they impose that on the majority of our people. Then we're cut off from our family who speaks English so that they just cause this mass confusion and give us all the shades and language and cultural differences. And we sit here beating one another into further poverty while the enemy continues to live a heavenly life on earth. That's why people like Donald Trump need to be quiet. 
because the Trump hotels that you're building, you have Mexican workers on your side. You have black workers on your side. You have so-called illegal workers on your side because you don't care about their lives. You just want the money that comes once the hotel is built. So we're not enemies of one another. And we are thankful to have bold leadership, courageous leadership, enough, I'll say it nicely, enough strength, enough manhood in a man in front of us, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is unafraid to tell us what's in the mind of our enemy so that we could not necessarily just go skipping down the road and pretending there's no work to be done. No, he's truthful with us. He's exposing their lies so we know exactly what we're dealing with and what we need to confront. And if we're honest with one another, we know we cannot battle this enemy alone. We know we need one another, but more than one another. We need the God of all of our people to back us and we stand together and call God into this. God has permitted it. God has allowed it. I'm going to close with this quote that is found in a wonderful book that you should all read called The Open Veins of Latin America. It was a book given to the late, by the late President Hugo Chavez to President Obama when they first met. It's a book that highlights the 500 years of suffering of the native people of this hemisphere. But there's a quote in there from President Taft, the former president of this nation. I didn't say our president, I said the president of this nation. Where he said in 1912, that the day is not far distant when three stars and stripes at three equidistant points will mark our territory. He said, one at the North Pole, another at the Panama Canal, and a third at the South Pole. The whole hemisphere will be ours. This is him speaking for white people as the head of white people, as the president. He didn't talk about Mexicans or black people. It will be ours, in fact, as by virtue of the superiority of our race. It is already ours morally. Now you may want to say we're in a post-racial America. You may want to say, well, it's the land of the free and the home of the brave. But here's the president of this nation saying that this whole hemisphere belongs to Caucasian people because they're better than everybody else. Think about that. He didn't say they're treat everyone better because he said this after they tried to take lands from Mexico to make it back into slave-holding territories. They sent bankers into North America, into Mexico, into the Caribbean to fund American companies and European companies to steal the land from the native people who had been working it for centuries. That's why immigrants have to come to this country. That's why they have to cross the desert and almost die or swim across the river or get a coyote to take them in the back of a pickup truck, escaping by the, their mere lives, hoping to save the future generations of their children, not because they think America is the promised land, but because the land that was promised to them and their people has been taken to them, from them by a wicked enemy. And there's strength in us having our land. There's value and purpose in us knowing who we are and having a land that we can live out our culture in obedience to the will of God. And that's why the enemy's aim has always been not to just have us work the land, but for him to own the land that we then are put to work on. That's a slave maker right there. He wants to be the owner. All he wants from us is our intelligence and our brilliance and our lifeblood. But today, that day is over because there's a man from God present calling the whole world of black, brown, red, and yellow to justice or else. Oh, I'm so anxious to hear this morning from those who are coming after me because this is a sign that no longer will we be divided. But as we were in the beginning, so we shall be in the end. Are you ready for that kind of teaching and that kind of knowledge which will give us back who we really are from the creator?